Hello and welcome to Living a Purpose-Filled Life. I am your host, Dr. Miracle Pettinger. I trust you are having a great and awesome day thus far. Don't you know that there is help in the hills? There's help in the hills. So I am currently at the time of this recording in my car with my coffee. I'm going to share with you a scripture and a prayer. So it's a bit reminiscent of our car coffee or prayer. (laughs) So I want to talk to you today about Psalm 121, knowing that God, he is the one that helps us and he helps those who seek him. And Psalm 121 is is familiar scripture to many. In the New King James Version, um, it says, and these are only eight verses, it says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forever more. Ah, that is an awesome word of encouragement to those who choose to believe in him through his son, Jesus Christ, not only choosing to believe, but having a relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. That same passage of scripture in the New Living Translation says, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he watches over Israel, never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands before, beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not hurt or harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. The reason why I wanted to share this passage of scripture with you is to remind you that when you look not in yourself, but away from yourself, when we're going through situations, circumstances, trying to accomplish assignments and tasks, oftentimes we have the propensity to try to find more strength on the inside of us, inner strength, and digging deep inside a well that has already run dry. Whereas we need to be looking up up and away from ourselves and up and away, not just staring into the universe, into the atmosphere, but I'm talking about positioning our hearts to a, to the one true and living God, away from our self-centeredness, away from what we think is right, away from our self-righteousness or our self-rightness and what we think we're capable of doing. And also we need to be looking away from those people that yes, God has provided not as resources, but don't look to them as the source. Don't look them at, to them as the end all be all. They are tools, they are resources that God has provided. So we need to be looking up and away to the source. In these scriptures, we see that in verse two, it reminds us that our help comes from the Lord, the one who made heaven and earth, where you need to go to the creator, not look at the creations. He will not let you slump, uh, stumble. He is your mentor. He is your coach. He is your safety feature. He will not let you slip as long as you are looking towards him, watching him, hearing him and choosing to obey everything he tells you to do. He watches over you and will not let you and will not let you slumber. Um, Excuse me. He watches over you and will not slumber. He watches over you. So he doesn't take a break. He will not sleep on the job. So with that kind of security, we know that he is our protector. In verse five, he tells us that he watches over us. He, He stands besides us as a protective shade. 
He keeps us, he protects us, and he will shade us during the daytime hours as well as the nighttime hours. Not just literally, but also figuratively. What kind of daytime situations are you going through? What kind of nighttime situations are you going through where it seems like it's the darkest of night? Don't you know that God will be there and that he is already there and he is there to protect you? So even when the sun is blasting down on you and you're feeling the heat and the pressure and the worry and the anxiety and the stress of different situations and circumstances, it will not harm you. You will not burn. You may feel the heat, but you will not burn. And even at the nighttime situations that may go on, as it gets later in the day, as long as you've been going through this thing. And it seems like it's almost coming to an end. And the heat may have let up a bit. But guess what? You, your eyes will not dim. You will still have clear direction, clear focus. You will still be able to see clearly with the wisdom and discernment of God. Because he is still there to protect you. He will also keep you from all harm as he watches over your life. He will keep you from evil. But And in doing so, keeping you from evil, you have to choose not to run to evil. You have to choose to resist the devil so, and, and watch him flee, not yielding to those temptations. And verse 8 also reminds us that he keep watch over us as we come and go, both now and forever. When you go in and when you go out, that means there's going to be times of transition. There are going to be places, people, seasons, And for many different reasons that you will have to go into a space and that you will have to come out. If God brought you in, he will also bring you out. Can can you trust God enough to know that he is with you because you're looking to the hills, you're receiving your instruction, your direction, your kingdom strategies from him. And because of that, he will make sure that you are covered. He sees the circumstances and the situations that brought you into that position. And he knows all the drama, the trauma, and all the politics that are going on that may also usher you out. He is doing it not just now. He's done it before. And he will continue to do it forevermore. We just have to trust and rely that what he tells us is the truth. And we have to choose to follow after the truth. When you're looking for that direction, when you're looking for that discernment, I encourage you to look to the hills. There's, as they used to say um, back in the olden days, as one might say, uh, in California with the 49ers, (laughs) the 19, uh, with the gold rush and everything, there's gold in them, their hills. Don't you know there is gold? There is something precious, a valuable wisdom, discernment in the hills of God, in the hills of the kingdom of God. So we need to make sure that we are not just looking, but choosing to honor, submit, and to surrender to the instructions God is giving us so that we can receive the gold, receive that valued wisdom, that valued treasure that's going to get us to the next place so we can continue to live our lives with purpose and on purpose through the power of God's word. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us. That as we look to the hills, because that's we that's where we choose to get our help. As we look to the hills, we know that above us, ah, oh, you are the most high God. You are higher than every situation, higher than every circumstance, higher than every policy, higher than every what if, higher than every imagination. You are higher and you are sovereign and we recognize your power and your authority in the name of Jesus. And Lord, because we choose to honor and recognize it, we surrender. We surrender our lives to you to this day. Oh God, we surrender, oh God, our agendas, our plans, our hopes, our dreams. We surrender them to you because only you are the one who can provide us with this 24-hour surveillance that we need to ensure that no hurt, harm, or danger comes nigh our dwelling. Thank you, Lord, for being our companion, for watching over us and being beside us. Thank you, Father, for your protection, your insurance, and also for knowing how to usher us into the places that you have prepared, and also 
thank you for allowing us to trust you and to follow your leading when you transition us out. We know that your ways and your plans for us will always lead to our good, your glory, and will benefit us in the end. That's why we choose to trust you on this day. Forgive us, God, for not trusting you in different areas of our lives. Lord, for those areas that we have not fully surrendered, we take this moment and we surrender them to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, forgive us for anger, bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. Forgive us, Lord God, for not choosing even to forgive others. Because if we don't forgive others, Lord, you won't forgive us. So in this moment, we choose to forgive, not as a feeling, but as a choice. We choose to forgive saying, Lord, whatever person, situation, place, or thing disappointed us, discouraged us, or may have offended us, we turn the situation over to you and we trust that your divine sovereign decision concerning the matter, because you are the righteous judge, prevails and will work out for not only our good, but for their good as well. Because it is your desire that all of the, all the world come to the full knowledge of you and that the world will be saved. Lord, we thank you right now for leading, guiding us, and directing us in all truth concerning this day. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining me for this time, for continuing to remember and enjoy knowing that God has got you covered. He is with you. He is watching over you. He doesn't take a break. He is guiding you not only into places, but he's also guiding you out of some places, places, situations, relationships. Ah, he's guiding you out of some places. So trust him and take him at his word. God bless you and have a great and awesome day. Bye-bye.